Hello, Michael here from Small Robot Studio with another RenderMan 23 tutorial. Today we're going to be having a look at render stats and how you can have a look at them to see what is taking up the most time in your renders. And hey, make sure you're subscribed with notifications on, otherwise you may be missing out on the many tutorials that we're releasing for free each week here on YouTube. So you may recognize this scene from previous tutorials, it's the synth room scene, and we're going to be looking at this scene in a render and we're going to see what is taking up most of the render time. So for this particular render, all I'm using is a adaptive rendering from 0 to 64 samples. Everything else is pretty much default. If we head over into the advanced tab, we can scroll down till we find the statistics lobe and you can set this to be a number of levels. This will be the accuracy or sort of resolution in which you'll get the outputted image. Uh, which you would have seen in the thumbnail and here's what it looks like. It's a pretty small thumbnail though so you may want to increase the level to 2. I think the default is 1. So far as the XML file goes, if you click this button here you'll see the output that I'm using. Uh, I'm using tokens here so if you right click you can see that you get uh, WS in brackets and that's the path to the current project. So what I'm using is WS and then I'm just typing that synth room inspect.xml. So that's just going to put the XML document in the root directory. Actually it's above the root directory in this case. Make sure you use XML at the end of your file name otherwise you'll get a probably a .ma um, or an unknown file type. If you don't do this you may be able to just edit your extension to be a .xml and it may work. So I've already rendered this out so let's have a look at the xml. First we'll show where it is in the directory. So you'll see I've got my xgen test folder that I was using for this project and above that we've got the synthroom inspect xml document that I've created. So what we can do is if we just bring up chrome for example and we can just click and drag that into the url bar and this will give us the results of the render stats. So I'm not going to go through every single thing here, but I'm just going to point out the important things. The heat map is where the majority of your render time is being spent. So if you've got a lot of red areas, you can tell that those areas are being focused on uh, by the renderer a lot. You can see this is quite even, which can be good and can be bad. If we move over into integration, you'll see that the uh, as I was using adaptive sampling, max sampling at 64 you'll see that the majority of this scene is actually being rendered at the 64 samples. So there may be an opportunity to optimize the scene in some of these materials to bring that sample time down. However, this may not always be the case. It just would depend on what your scene is. But the good thing about this render heat map is that it will show you what areas of the scene took the most time and focus from the renderer. So you can see that everything is fairly well balanced. There's no areas that I could change really to make the render speed up more because the majority of it is rendering at about the same amount. Now that doesn't mean it could mean that everything is slow to render at this point. Um, however, this is reasonably well optimized. I could do a little bit better, but it's not too bad. You can also break this down into the time and you can see where the time is going on your render. So you'll see that out of the total time, light samples were taking up that many seconds and material samples were taking up that many seconds. So you can break down the render time quite a bit and see if for example you have too many indirect rays you'd have a very high number of seconds compared to your di direct rays. So if you're noticing that this is incredibly high whereas your direct rays is incredibly low you may have too many indirect rays being calculated and it might be an opportunity to turn those down. Next you can see where the memory is going. Um, you see it's all fairly even across the four top contenders there. Things that you might want to look out for is geometry and texture. Make sure that your texture cache isn't too high. If you look at the texture tab you can find which textures are taking up the majority of the cache. So you can see that I was using this wallpaper texture it's taking up 20% of the cache there and down the bottom here you can see that the HDRI is taking up 15% of the cache so I could probably reduce the resolution of those two however the HDRI is 4k so I could seeing since it's not actually visible in the scene I could actually reduce that down to something quite a bit less and it would reduce the overall cache size. 
The other thing worth looking at is your geometry, making sure that you're not doing too many subdivisions. A lot of the things in this scene are subdivided and I probably could go through and back a bunch of them off and that would lower the render time. Because this is a wide shot, a lot of these things probably don't need to be subdivided. But because this is the base shot, I just had everything at max for the, for the majority. So a lot of the textures could be split in half for their level of detail that they're seeing at this distance. But because I used a lot of close-ups and other shots, I had everything turned all the way up and then sort of just was allowing myself to be quite versatile. You can also have a look at your shading tab and you can see if any of the particular shaders are using a lot of the time or a lot of your compute time. PXI texture is taking up the most, that makes sense because I've got textures on the majority of the objects in the scene, so you would expect to see that. You could also see that Pixar to float is taking up 10% of the time, so maybe I could avoid using a Pixar to float and just go directly from an RGBR output from a node, and that might save some time. Um, the normal map as well is taking up quite a bit of time. I could possibly convert that to just a bump map, which is only taking up 1% of the time that may decrease the overall render time because as it's a wide shot as I said earlier a normal map may not be necessary for a lot of those objects. So I just cooked up another little scene just to give you an example of the differences between you, that you might see between two different scenes. So you can see that the render time heat map here is quite a bit different. Um, you can see that more time is being sent, spent on this foreground area. All I did in this one was it's just a plane with a cube on it and a singular light. So it makes it pretty easy to spot all the differences. You can see I also it's also not as fine an image. That's because I had the level here and the statistics just set to one. You will get a faster render time though with a lower level because it has to also calculate this XML and output this data as well. If you're optimizing, you only want to do this at the time you're optimizing and then turn it off for your final renders and your batch renders, especially if you're working with an animation. So hopefully that clears things up for anyone that was trying to use the render stats. Uh, this was requested by a patron to do this quick tutorial so this is here for you all available to have a look at i've already done a tutorial on render optimization for renderman 23 you can see it here it's this tutorial i will try to remember to put a link in the description as well for that if you did like the scene you can check it out on our gumroad or patrons that have been a patron for six months get it for free otherwise you can get it for half price if you are a patron that's it for this tutorial if you found it useful make sure you leave a like so other people can find it and if you haven't already make sure you subscribe as we we're bringing out CG and illustration tutorials every week just like this one. Become a patron and access tutorial assets, bonus content, a private discord and more by clicking the link below.